The use of solar panels for energy generation is becoming more and more common. But how do they actually convert sunlight into energy? There are actually two common ways of doing this. The simplest, the one that was first used, is something called a solar thermal collector. This uses the sun rays, including both the infrared and ultraviolet parts of the spectrum, to heat water, either by the use of evacuated tubes or by flat plate collectors. Though these methods can be used to generate electricity, its most common use is used to provide heating. The water is circulated through the system either by using a small pump or by using convection. The hot water is then stored in a large insulated water tank for when it's needed, or alternatively it can be used to directly heat items like, say, a swimming pool. The advantages of this system are they're very low maintenance, the design is simple, so they can be manufactured and inst installed almost anywhere. They don't generally require access to mains electricity, so it can be used in remote locations. Disadvantage is that they require warm, sunny climates to work most efficiently. Overheating and freezing can cause operating problems. There's lack of flexibility relating to supply and demand. The other common method of generating power from the sun is what's known as photovoltaics. These are the most popular way to generate electricity from sunlight. These work by collecting the light from the sun, which then excites electrons in the collecting material, be it form of silicon or some other semiconductor. These excited electrons then migrate towards an electrode and pass on its charge, thus producing direct current from the solar panel. The efficiency of a solar panel depends on what proportion of light is captured and how much energy the electrons pass on as electricity and how much they return as heat before they can pass on that charge. The advantages of photovoltaic panel they can be portable, so can be used in disaster zones, powering devices ranging from refrigerators to telephones. They can also be used in remote areas without the expensive need to connect to a national grid system. They are also silent and low maintenance since they have no moving parts and when installed on roofs have virtually no visual impact on the environment. Disadvantages, they are complicated to manufacture and they produce direct current, although this is, is relatively easy to convert power is difficult to store, so some may be wasted unless they are actually connected to a grid system. When they use an industrial scale to generate electricity, it can be used up an awful lot of land. Whilst they're installed, the energy they produce is virtually free, but the installation cost is actually quite large, and there's actually quite a lag time before the initial investment cost is actually recovered in generated electricity. Initially, when solar panels were first being introduced, electricity generated was considerably more expensive than the fossil fuels. Established energy producers said that the subsidies given to the technology was unfair. It seems now ironic that the energy in many places is now cheaper when produced by solar panels. Some fossil fuel companies are saying that they are being outcompeted and they should be given support in turn. So that's introduction to solar panels for energy production.